so my first question would be uh, because i would start with what you are as a, as a professional at news minute because it's a very interesting title because i have not really come across it's like in your what are you what what goes inside the mind of raga malika when she said hey i want to experiment something today you know i want to um, take this idea and how you approach so remember so imagine for the first time someone told you hey newsletters are important you're not the believer um, because then you are being counter intuitive to what you think uh, so that was that that's question number one uh, what made you uh, i know you said okay i was a non believer and then i became a believer because i have to take i have to uh, increase the membership yeah so um uh, to answer that question uh, first of all i made up that title what made you what made you believe how to take that view right um so yeah like i said uh, i made up that title um uh, because so basically i've been a journalist all my life uh, most of my life uh, in between i had a, a crisis of faith because i was working with times now and i was working under arnab goswami and i was like what the hell am i doing with my life so i decided that i wanted to quit journalism and like do other things so i was pottering around for a bit i worked in policy for a bit and uh, i did a uh, the lamp fellowship i was working with an mp and all that uh, and then i worked with an ngo for a year uh, and then i realized that uh, this is sort of where i belong i belong in a newsroom right uh, i came back to the newsroom because uh, that's who i am i am a journalist uh and uh, once i came back into the newsroom i was um, uh, i've been heading uh, editorial for uh, tnm i've been heading the edit desk uh and uh, again as a journalist i am an editor i am not uh, much of a reporter i am not a uh, guy who's going to go out on the field and like you know talk to a bunch of people and like come back with stories i'm the person who's going to sit in the newsroom and say okay this is uh, how we can like you know structure things these are what the headlines can be uh this is what our editorial take should be and this is how we can like you know get things across to people in the uh, most um, uh in the best manner right so i've been an editor um always and uh, membership was new to me um i mean i've been like sort of wanting to do new things for a while of course i mean uh, that happens to a lot of people i guess uh and tnm has been great like you know in tnm anybody uh, it's not like you know if you're stuck in a role uh, you can't do anything else it's not like if you're an editor you can't write or if you're a writer you're never going to experience what uh, editing in a newsroom is going to be like like you know it's uh, we are a small organization and our leadership is sort of flexible enough and like sort of innovative enough to say you know, people can't be put into boxes right so we uh, our usp is south our usp is south india and uh, we do well mainly because we understand south india right it's not like uh, we have people uh, sitting in delhi and bombay and thinking of the rest of the country as satellites so that is a problem with like so called national media right uh, yes. so once uh, we got onto the membership uh, journey and um, i uh, decided i mean they was decided that i would head it because uh, uh, like i mentioned earlier i was on a fellowship with google in colombia um Uh, on newsroom leadership and my uh, project was uh, the membership project and uh, so i went to new york last year uh, at columbia university and we met all of these people including rafat and you know everybody is like oh newsletter 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 oh my god newsletter newsletter and i'm like i don't know anybody who reads a newsletter right i don't know i don't personally know anyone who would say i'm going to take 20 minutes out of my day and like read this thing right like i don't know personally anybody like that and then there was this uh, i mean we are when you are talking to people in america and europe and they have a very different view of things based on like their experiences and uh, there is a tendency for uh, uh the westerners like americans uh, especially to say that you know whatever is happening in america is happening in the rest of the world which is not true it right, is most of the times not true uh so when americans say that the newsletter is the most important thing i'm like okay maybe it's the most important thing in america but is that the case for my audience is that the case for my reader right and that's a question that we all need to ask no. because you know the minute you say that every reader is the same then you fail then you don't need to exist if every reader is the same then the republic can take care of all of them right like if every news consumer is the same then times now can reach out to all of them that's not the case that's not the case so all our audiences are different uh, tnm's reader is not the same as uh, hindus reader or buyers reader i mean there are overlaps right but you need to understand why somebody comes to you and um, that was something like you know for me uh, for the longest time it was 
is somebody going to come to me to read a newsletter? And if they are, then what is the newsletter that they're going to read? It cannot be like everybody else's, right? My reader does not want the same thing that a scroll reader does. Then what is it that my reader wants? That is the first question. Uh, so, uh, yeah, um, I decided to make up that uh, uh, title, uh, my designation. I went to my editor and I said, uh, Danya, you know, this is the designation that I want. And she's like, yeah, okay, fine. Right. So it was for me. Yeah, I want to I wanted a fancy designation. First of all, that was the reason. Uh, secondly, I think it's important to sort of um, I mean, through this, through my learning um, all of these years, it's it's important to especially um, as a small organization, innovate all the time and to not get stuck in uh, any kind of a mold. And of course, that means that you're going to make mistakes. Of course, that means that, you know, you're going to try something that doesn't work or you're going to try something that, you know, gets criticized a lot. But how do you sort of accept that and like move on and like, you know, tinker with it and like correct it, right? So that's what we so are you're doing. So your typical, so your typical uh, profile is that I understand it's like a, a lot of editorial strategy for sure, because that's what your core job is. That's what you're trained as. And then you went to Columbia and you learned newsroom leadership. Now, my, where, I, where I find things very interesting is, okay, you're doing your core job uh, with, or without the title, but when you say special projects and experiments, do you have something, do you have a list of things from where you went and studied more about this? Because a lot of innovations are happening in Colombia. A lot of people go there and learn, and like Benoit came from there and is working, and uh, probably Money Control, or, and he's doing some great work there. Other, uh, How India Lives um, is another project which came from Colombia. Uh, so, for me, it's like an interesting insight, like how you guys go there and pick something very interesting. Like you picked up newsroom leadership, and then you come here. Um, do you have I, a, like small small list of trends and phenomena you are like keeping your eye on? That hey, this is what I should be. This matches my audience profile here. Let me try this out. So I was in Colombia for exactly two weeks, and uh, no, one week. Sorry, I was in Colombia for exactly one week, and then they took us to uh, Mountain View which is like one really eerie village in the middle of nowhere, right? I, I don't like those places. Like, I like cities. I'm a city person. So, Mountain View was a bit of this thing. But yeah, Columbia, I was there for exactly one week. So, it was a fellowship program that Google and this one is doing, like I said. Um, but in terms of uh, trends and this, I mean, it's great, right? You have that exposure to go and like listen to what, um, you know, Skift is doing or listen to what uh, CNN is doing and all of these guys and they're all trying different things. Everybody is innovating. Everybody is like, you know, talking about this and that. And for, for me, like, you know, sitting over there with um, people from Asia Pacific, like my other fellows were from uh, other newsrooms in Asia Pacific, like Japan and Australia, New Zealand, uh, Malaysia, and uh, a lot of legacy newsrooms. And uh, they say, okay, you have like, you know, you, your product guy should do this. Your tech guy should do this. And la, 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 la. And I'm like, you know, we are a, a 35, 40 member organization and most of us are journalists and we don't even have an in-house tech team. So when you talk about structures like that, when you talk about like, you know, big media structures, is small media going to have those same structures? No. Right. Does that mean that we can't succeed? No. We all multitask, right? I'm, I'm trying to learn how audience acquisition works, which is not my uh, background. Right. But does that mean that I can never learn it? No, I will learn it. Right. So uh, in that way, you know, to sort of understand that um, just because uh, this the system thinks in a certain way or the industry thinks in a certain way, is that the only way to succeed? No. So those are some things that, you know, were insights for me. Um, but other than that, trends uh, like India, uh, for instance, like newsletters, when you say email newsletters, I have an email ID that I just use for signing up to a bunch of things and then I never open it. Right. And I'm guessing that's not unique. I'm not unique, right? I, I know a lot of people would do that, right? So then what is it that people open? I know that our ecosystem is a WhatsApp ecosystem. But can I capitalize on WhatsApp? No, I not really. Because legally, WhatsApp will like kick me out if I try to do that, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. because they don't want it to become like a, a, a spam tool. Not that it is something else right now. But, uh, you know, it's, it's difficult. It's, it's sort of uh, difficult to see, okay, what is it that is going to work? I mean, you have an idea, but is the idea in that form the right idea for you? And that's always been our uh, thinking and our question, right? So, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know if I answered your question or even got it. But uh, yeah, you did answer my question because, see, it, it's, it's a very fluid thing. You pick up something on the move and then you 
read something, you find something. See, I, I, I've never been to Colombia or maybe I will never go there. But for me to tap into what you guys write, what you guys do is something which helps people like me to understand, oh, these are the trends. And I, 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 I do that. Uh, my next question is, uh, you talked about audience acquisition and you are learning. It's a challenge for you and you learn so much more about it. Everyone is multitasking. Can you give a brief snapshot of a typical user or typical member of the News Minute and or how it has evolved or how it is evolving or how you want because uh, it's also about how who do you want to recruit as your reader, as a user, as a, like you said, I don't want to be on them, on WhatsApp. Uh, I would rather want to tap the community elsewhere. Uh, so what are those insights about your audience? If you may share some of it, uh, which you can share, that would be great. Uh, first of all, I want to be on WhatsApp, right? I really want to be on WhatsApp, but there's nothing. Um, I mean, maybe uh, HashGeek and all of you guys can like figure this out for us. But like, you know, there is no tool for me to use on WhatsApp, which is not like completely expensive. Uh, so expensive that it's beyond our reach. Um, because it's all made for like uh, e-commerce, right? All of these WhatsApp tools are made for e-commerce. Um, and WhatsApp doesn't want me to like collect like hundreds of phone numbers and like, you know, message these people individually. So how do I use WhatsApp? That is my question, right? I want to be on WhatsApp, frankly. Uh, the second question, um, I mean, you asked about like, you know, uh, who is uh, the TNM member? Um, as I said, we are very early in um, our membership journey. Uh, but basically, I mean, if you look at TNM or any news website, right? Um, and when you look at your uh, unique users every month, um, most of them, right, uh, the whole bulk of them are people who've clicked on a link on social or on WhatsApp or on Google, and they've come to your site once and they've gone away, right? So these are people who are flybys. They've come, they've read something, even the brand name doesn't register for them. They don't know who TNM is. They've never heard of us before, or maybe they've heard of us, but they don't, you know, care about us and they've moved on, right? They probably read like one story in two months or three months. And these are people who are flybys, right? I'm not asking them to become members. I know that they're not going to become members. That person who's read a breaking news story is not going to become a member, right? But then there are the other uh, leaders. These are people who know TNM, right? Who followed us uh, for years now, who know Danya or who know uh, Anna or Saumya or any of our like reporters, Priyanka or Prajwal, because all of our reporters are people who are engaged with our readers on Twitter or Facebook, right? So they know us, they know uh, the kind of coverage that we've done, right? Whether it is the Kerala floods or Chennai floods or whatever. And uh, we are an organization that has been on the ground, right? We are not like, you know, sitting in an office and saying that, oh, from here we will figure out like what is happening. No, our editor in chief was on the ground when the Kerala floods happened. Uh, or when the Chennai floods happened and she was there in the middle of it and uh, we were our newsroom, people in the newsroom were coordinating with like, you know, relief and rescue and, you know, uh, sending out messages and all of that stuff, right? So we were doing that work and we were doing that work with people who wanted to help as well. And those are the people who care about Kerala or Tamil Nadu or, you know, uh, other states in South India. They care about like, you know, what is happening over here and they care about the fact that uh, media houses sitting in Delhi and Bombay don't even turn and look at what is happening in South India when something big happens, right? Because they're bothered about Kangana Ranaut or uh, whatever else that they're bothered about, right? So um, those are the people who will become TNM members, right? They know, they've read something or they've been part of something that TNM has done and they understand why we exist. They understand that we are important. They understand independent media is important and a voice from, the South, in from uh, South India is important in English, right? We're not even claiming that we are the voice of South India. Nothing like that. I'm saying we need coverage of news from South India in English that is unbiased, that is independent, that is not Kangana run out and whatever, right? So, so do you have uh, people, do you have like, they, is there a breakup like how many people from North, how many people from South, how many people from the US? Because that would be interesting to know that. Uh, we are. I, I, mean, I, I read News Minute very regularly because that that gives me that perspective, which at times even Hindu does not. So uh, I don't have that kind of a breakup. Uh, for instance, I mean the NRI membership has just started. It's like a couple of weeks, not even a couple of weeks old, right? So we are just starting on that journey. We are, uh, uh, you know, trying to like uh, reach out to our NRI readers, and of course because we had like a lot of tech delays, we were supposed to launch in the middle of August, then it was beginning of September, then it was the middle of September and it was like um, almost um, 
after the middle of September when we actually like launched. Okay. And that's always uh, not a great time to ask people to open their wallets, right? I mean, everybody is struggling at the end of the month. So yes. uh, it's now that we are sort of like, you know, pushing more and asking people to like sign up and stuff like that. Um, as far as our India members are concerned, uh, like you said, Abhishek, I mean, thank you for uh, being a, a reader of PNM. And we've had other people uh, from other parts of India as well who are coming and telling us that you know, we need PNM because uh, you guys talk about the South and, you know, you have unbiased news over there. And uh, before we launched membership uh, for both India and uh, NRI, like, I've spoken to personally a lot of people um, for research, right? Like, why does somebody come to TNM? Why does somebody want to support TNM, right? And those are uh, the points that we hear again and again. Um, we support you because you're unbiased, right? So I'm going to continue supporting you unless tomorrow you turn around and do something drastically stupid. So those are learnings for us. Or we support you because you give us the stories that nobody else gives us. We support you because, you know, uh, one of your stories mentioned my hometown, which I haven't seen in news media ever, right? So we have that ground presence and they know that, you know, when, when something happens, we know that you're going to be on the ground or when something big happens, we want to know what TNM is saying about it. And it's humbling and it's great to sort of hear that from our readers, right? And those people are going to be the ones who become members. So in terms of uh, abroad, definitely I don't have any data. In terms of India, most of our readers, um, I'm guessing are South Indians who are living either in South India or elsewhere, right? Most of them, I would say. Uh, but of course, there are people from other parts of the country who want to know what is happening in South India and who care about, like, you know, what is happening in different parts of the country uh, without having to, like, you know, depend on this um, nationalist uh, sort of rhetorical uh, television, Delhi, Bombay, bubble uh, kind of stuff. So those are our readers. And these are people who've known us. Like, I don't think anybody is going to sign up to TNM because they've seen us once. No, those are not the people who are going to sign up, right? All right. These are people All who right. engaged with us before. You know something about us that makes them believe that, you know, we need support. Yeah, so you pretty much covered, for me, uh, audience, I mean, the common enemy, which I know about, you know, for Indian, uh, independent Indian newsrooms, are, one is North India, which it thinks that, <laughs> oh, we are the news and we are everything. And that's where I I, I live in that part of the world. Uh, the other is obviously Bombay Delhi bubble. It's like you think you're talking about something and someone does a dance in a hula loop and everyone talks about that and they're not talking about anything else, which is not bad, but that's I how I love it is. that hula, hula hoop video. Huh? <laughs> so so Delhi, Delhi media decides what should be on the uh, national... Um, trend loop and that happens. Um, but what I also want to know, and I understand this audience is there. When you talk, when you say that we want to cover South India, uh, like we have grown up reading Hindu and I've grown up reading Hindu and Deccan Herald because those were the two key sources of information for us about the South. Uh, and whatever uh, non-North Indian idea of South India we had, we had from those two great sources. Mm -hmm. And that g gave me a very different uh, a point of view than what everyone else had in North India. So when you say uh, for South India, because we already were reading English and then the news when it happened. So you have to briefly tell me a couple of things. One, what is the like North Star for South, uh, for the news minute when it says South India? Uh, and two, uh, uh, what, what are your like editorial guidelines for like broader editorial guidelines which you say, oh, this is what, even if we put something in the newsletter, uh, newsletter, it has to have a lens of this. You know, we can't just write whatever comes to my mind. I find it very interesting. I just put it out there and I send it to my audience. Something like that. Okay, so this is difficult. So um, in terms of North Star, like uh, uh, we want to do journalism that is for public good, right? Mm -hmm. We want to do journalism from South India. So for instance, in the, uh, the Hathras issue, Right, uh, it is happening in UP. It's happening in Delhi. There are protests happening everywhere, um, and this is a, a, an issue that uh, whether you're living in Bangalore or you're living in uh, Bombay or you're living in Delhi, people are interested in knowing what this is, and uh, most people have an opinion around what is happening. But uh, can uh, my reporter sitting in Bangalore do original reporting about what is happening in Hathras? No. Right. So, and, and it would be like wrong to say that I'm going to do it. You're not there on the ground, mm -hmm. right? Similar to sort of saying that, you know, somebody is going to parachute out of Delhi and drop in on uh, Kochi and like, you know, understand what is happening with the Sabarimala issue immediately. No, they're not going to. 
So similarly, me parachuting and dropping onto UP or like sort of making phone calls from here and saying I'm going to do original reporting from there is wrong. Right? You can't do it. However, what can you do? You can get voices of people. You can get voices of people and issues around like what is happening and like focus on that. So uh, we've always believed in not not doing this para dropping journalism. Right? We are ground journalists. We do what we know uh, and we do it from where we are. so that is the most important thing for us uh, and journalism for public good right journalism that is unbiased and uh, we've always like try to make sure that our journalism uh, our news reporting is different from our opinion right people have opinions everybody has opinions we don't believe in this journalists are not supposed to have ideologies journalists are not supposed to have opinions no we are human beings first and we are breathing thinking human beings first so obviously all of us have opinions but when you are presenting news when you're presenting facts like how do you sort of keep that straight without like playing this balancing game of um putting a scientist versus an astrologer right we don't do that we don't say that you know somebody is talking about science and then no no we have to balance it so we'll get an astrologer no we don't do that nonsense but you know how do you present mm-hmm. facts without like sort of bringing in like opinion sideways and our readers respect us for that and uh, we make sure that when we are putting out opinion we say this is opinion right we say that this is opinion put mm-hmm. out by this person um in terms of uh, what uh, is a lens of looking at things again um i believe that if there is a, an editorial meeting with five people and then all five people agree on everything that is a really bad editorial meeting uh, you're not going to get anywhere right there have to be disagreements there have to be different points of view there have to be like fights because only that means that you know uh, there is thinking going on that uh, people are actually like you know considering things from like multiple points of view um so yeah in terms of um, somebody uh, might write an opinion piece on pnm that i might not agree with at all right uh, but then it is an opinion that somebody does want to put out and it's not something that is like for us it's not something that is inciting right and it's not something that is derogatory it's not something that is abusive so if those things are followed then if it is an opinion that is like worth sort of putting out even if i don't personally agree with it or our editor in chief doesn't personally agree with it like we do sort of say okay this is an opinion and that we are putting it out with all the right uh, disclaimers right this is a personal opinion whatever so yeah that is the way we've uh, uh, gone forward the next question is about two very imperative things about your your efforts one is audience development what are the key things you do like you can uh, list down these are the three things we do to develop the audience like we are using social media or we are using paid social we are you're running ads or you are um, reaching out to people through other partnerships uh, how are you developing so that part of the strategy which is how to develop that and the other part of the strategy is uh, how are you using like today's technological uh, tools like analytics to analyze or oh, this, this is the kind of Uh, content people want to read up on or these are the things which we should focus more on and less on have you discovered something like that in the journey of developing your audience sort of uh, audience acquisition when when we talk about like member acquisition and stuff like that it's um, yeah social is a tool that we use for it um, but uh, i don't think that's the only strategy that we can have right um Uh, we also use our content to drive home the point that uh, you know people need to support us so whenever we do a good story we ask the reporter to like you know probably make a small video and like embed it and talk about like you know why we uh, want somebody to become a member or we put like a graphic inside it um and uh, yeah we talk to people we talk to uh, our members and tell them that you know uh, maybe you can invite uh, other people to become a tnm member so those are the ways uh, of acquisition and then of course this is a question of retention and uh, because again it is a membership and it's not a subscription right so it's it's easy to say that we're doing a membership and not a subscription but to actually sort of be on the ground doing that is like very difficult like how do i keep my members engaged how do i make sure that a person who's like for instance i'm a i'm a kanjus person right like i've uh, before this year never uh, sort of paid for any um uh, news on the web and uh, like you know sort of in the in the, in the last 12 months and in the last year like sort of thinking about what is happening with independent media in india has made me feel guilty about the fact that you know i need to support people as well so i have signed up to a bunch of places this year right i have subscribed to scroll i have subscribed to caravan i have subscribed to a bunch of places 
but uh, main reason driving that was a feeling of responsibility and a feeling of guilt right um so next year am i going to go back and like uh, sort of uh, renew my uh, subscription for caravan the question is have i used caravan have i logged in and like how many stories have i read in caravan that's the question that i'm going to ask myself right like as a I'm, i'm not saying as a as a person who has a lot of money or who's who's just you know able to sort of have that heart to give i'm not that person right so then why am i going to pay caravan or why am i going to pay stroll my question is going to be have i used it enough am i getting like value out of this right so obviously for a tnm member also that is going to be the question i paid tnm the first time because yeah i like them i want to support them i want to support independent media i feel guilty or i feel like i need to be more responsible or you know whatever reason but the second time that payment has to happen that um reason has to be solidified right they have to see some value in what they are getting they have to use something to be able to say okay this is worth my money so that is um like for instance one of the things that we want to do with newsletters or with our forums we've just started our uh, forums uh, tnm forums where people can come and like you know talk to each other and talk to us right talk to tnm about uh, different things and uh, you know have a chat on like different uh, issues or you know play silly games or whatever it is uh, and see the value of like you know being there so that is difficult that is absolutely difficult i know i mean i i'm sure you guys like know about this like much more than i do um but uh, in terms of like saying that i'm going to like form a community is difficult work and uh, that's what uh, we are doing to sort of retain our uh, member and we hope that it will work i mean yeah okay uh, now since we've covered most of it uh, and the audience would love to know what are the things which like i could apply for my newsletter or i could apply because some broad principles and learning they remain the same so can you like help us with few ideas about what really helped you Uh, with regards to your content building like content strategy what are the things which you would ask your team member to do or what are the references what are the things which you look up to and what is it that you would want to practice or anyone who is wanting to write a good news letter about news what should they be doing irrespective of the geography or the demography uh, what are your learning if you could help us like few takeaways which we could use uh, on a day to day basis i think the uh, first and most important thing ever is the subject right i mean i i i i don't know i mean i'm sure everybody knows this but i think it uh, it, it needs to be reiterated we all like spend so much time on the 1000 words or the 800 words or whatever is going inside that newsletter but unless somebody opens your newsletter um, there's no point right unless your subject is sort of interesting enough or catches their eye unless that happens then your newsletter has not been opened right so i think that is the most important thing uh, the second thing like we did a bunch of like which uh, which htt which uh, here's the thing um, we did a bunch of ab tests right we did a bunch of ab tests on timings on subjects on sender name um, right which day of the week should we send something right all of this like we did a bunch of tests to see like you know which is and obviously there's no perfect answer right some things work and some things don't and then you have to like analyze that and see what is the best uh, possible scenario for you right and then uh, tests on like you know how many batches do you send out your newsletter in like you know how do you make sure that it doesn't end up in spam or it doesn't end up in promotions and how do you tell people that you know was like go and like open it or like you know white listers how do you tell them that and then there are other these things right i mean uh, you're using the same mailing list for uh, doing a bunch of things like we do events as well so if i'm doing an event or i'm doing a cause and i'm saying you know you can donate to this and then people are like hey why are they spamming me i'm going to answer this right so at what point does it become spam at what point are you putting off uh, your readers so that is something that uh, we have to think about as well and from a content point of view um, i think we need to understand like why you would when there are so many newsletters right like so many newsletters are there from everywhere in the world and it's not like a physical newspaper where you can't subscribe to something that is happening in um uh, spain or nigeria or uh, you know uk like you can subscribe to anything that is happening anywhere right i subscribe to a bunch of american newspapers so when that is the case why should someone come to you why should someone uh, want to subscribe to your particular newsletter and that's a question that is always at the back of my mind right 
So why is someone going to come to TNM to read a newsletter? And if I'm going to give them the same thing that is on the site all day, and if they read on the site all day, then why should they subscribe to the newsletter as well? Right. So those are all questions. Like, firstly, what is it that you want to achieve? Are you trying to make them click on links to go somewhere else? Uh, is that the um, goal? Right. Basically, you want to click the link and like you know get more numbers on your site, get more like you know views on your site. Is that your goal? or is it like a narrative newsletter that you want them to like spend some time they you want them to like engage with that content inside their mailbox or is it something else right like you know is it a mix of the two so what is it that you want to uh, do with your newsletter that clarity has to be there right like a lot of times people come back and say uh, give me a uh, feedback saying you know you put a lot of these things and i never get the time to like click on all of these links and read all of them and i am like okay great but is that what i want you to do is that why i am sending you the newsletter i have to take that feedback i have to take that feedback that is coming from somebody because of course they're giving you that feedback because they care right they're spending that time to uh, give you that feedback then you have to think about it and then you have to say what is it that i'm trying to do and are you doing that right what okay. is it that i'm trying for you and is that happening right we can all say that you know i put a lot of effort into this newsletter i've spent like a week on developing the content for this or i've spent uh, so many hours like you know doing research for this but at the end of the day is that fulfilling something some need for your reader or is that just like more of the same thing uh so basically yeah that is uh, what i would say is like the most important thing again content how is your um content like differentiated from other people's right and there is so much that is happening when there is so much content out there um how are you different from everybody else why should somebody to subscribe to you and let's if you have that question at the back of your mind all the time then i think uh, you should arrive at an answer at some point so what's your like favorite newsletter other than the tnm obviously and then uh-huh. you say that we have, you subscribe to scores of them um, ones which you end up reading once in a while which are those ones which you like really like that you look forward to um i like try this by pointer institute because uh, you know yes. it sort of uh, gives you like a bunch of tools even if i don't like use all of those tools like it's it's great to know like you know what is it that people are coming up with mm-hmm. like what is it that newsrooms around the world are like sort of using so i like try this um i like um, long reads sometimes like i again like i said like i want to believe that i am the kind of person who will read long form writing i'm yes. not but you know once in a while i like to uh, sort of delve deep into something and most of the time it's um, it's not it's it's features it's it's featureish it's uh, more like you know culture uh, pop culture kind of stuff uh, so long reads uh, gives you like you know um, deep dive stories from like a bunch of places in one one uh, capsule so you can choose to like you know click on one of those things so once in a while i would read something from long reads um then there is something called uh, them uh, which is a newsletter from autostraddle uh, which is again of interest to me uh, queer issues and stuff like that so i read that uh, sometimes then uh, actually from prs um, uh, uh, legislative uh, chakshu uh, puts out a daily newsletter called uh, the kiwi so uh, basically it's an automated newsletter but uh, it's very useful i feel like you know it gives you all the different opinion pieces that everyone has on indian uh, sites like you know what indian express has said what scroll has said what wire has said like you know it just has the headline link and uh, the writer's name and that is like very useful for me sometimes to say okay these are the different views that are coming on like you know different subjects so i may not like you know open it and read it every day but every once in a while i make it a point to like sort of go there because then i have everything in like one place so i like that um then rohan's uh, political flicks uh, fix sorry flicks flicks yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <All right>. political <laughs> flicks i open once in a while and i try to read um then um news laundry has that uh, i keep forgetting their name but i open it once in a while uh and uh, a couple of others like uh, like interest based uh, newsletters like uh, yeah but mainly these then i i've subscribed to a bunch right like i have like cjr i have New York Times like I've subscribed to some five newsletters from New York Times because everybody wants to be a New York Times reader right so I subscribe to like a bunch of stuff from uh uh this thing what's it called uh, New York Times right including their love letter and stuff like that I never read them um but yeah these are the it's it's like meeting a long lost friend on facebook for the first time you're very excited oh yes we'll be in touch we'll uh, always talk and then uh, you lose 
lose touch forever and that's <laughs> yeah. what happens with these newsletters i also like you go to new york times and they flood you with the choice and you subscribe yeah. to all of them yeah. i will read all of them i'll eat all of it it's like a buffet <laughs> a good buffet that you want to eat everything but then you're like you're full with the yeah, first meal my my have. mailbox is spammed with you new york times yes and then one day you go and start to unfollow or just yeah. yeah unsubscribe all of it i know that and last question would be um, you are and i'm i'm really so it impressed me when you say we don't have a tech team but we tech team but we are developing something and that's that should not be a concern anymore because uh, you can't say oh we have our own cms or this or that it was a thing in the i mean your cms was your news product at one point of time mm. um i don't think that's a that that gives you an edge what gives you an edge is what you're doing your lens on the your lens is south india and you're coming up with some great content how are you managing like these four newsletters for four different people now there's a membership element to it because it has to be you know, access, there has to be some access control to it um if you can like very briefly share how are you what kind of platform you are using uh, membership for, for for the newsletter or are you developing with someone else if you can share because that would really help um so our uh... a uh, daily newsletter one of my colleagues take care, takes care of the uh, the daily wrap that goes out to uh, any subscriber it's not a member only newsletter so my colleague haripriya uh, takes care of that that goes out five days a week um here's the thing is uh, mainly uh, me sort of like you no know, trying to ask people oh please give me an idea or like write about something or you know sometimes i write and it, it's very difficult for me to write right i mean i I'm, i'm more of an editor and uh, for me to like actually sit my ass down and like write something is like very <laughs> difficult <laughs> so uh, but i do i do try and uh, sort of uh, it's a way for me also to like become very disciplined about um, you know making sure that something goes out at a certain time and uh, so i take care of uh, putting together here's the thing and uh, um sort of writing content for it uh, most of the time as well and our uh, our providers mailchimp uh, we use mailchimp for everything so we use our uh, statistics from mailchimp to see I mean, of course, their geographic statistics suck, and uh, they just like tell you, "Oh, everybody is in the U.S. Everybody lives in the U.S." And I'm like, "Oh, okay, man. oh my person lives in Coimbatore, right?" So <laughs> that <laughs> is a problem. <laughs> But uh, otherwise, I mean, they have decent uh, sort of analytics on like you know open rates and like you know what time somebody opens something and all of that, and that's important for us. Um, then uh, with uh, Mosaic, which is our arts and culture newsletter, it's uh, written by. Uh, Uh, it's curated by uh, uh, an arts consultant uh, called Shreya uh, so we are uh, i mean she does it for us she makes it for us and um, the daily uh, briefs uh, the tnm briefs which we've just started uh, it's the first couple of issues so i've been like doing it myself uh, okay. but uh, hopefully like you know we'll we'll uh, have like more people uh, chipping in with that uh, from next week so we we have some great uh, we have mail chimp haters in the community i won't name uh-huh. their name uh, <laughs> but we can have like a separate session all together where everyone who hates mail chimp they can all get together and really <laughs> and I, really I, hate I, it for the entire <laughs> hour or so i i, I don't have like you know basically i don't have anything to compare it with like i know that substack yeah. exists and uh, scroll stack and everything but like uh, mail chimp is easy to use like for me it's easy to use it's um, intuitive in terms of like you know the elements that i want to add i can like play around with it i don't have to like it's not like a coded uh, uh, newsletter template that i have to like then like you know break my head over like i can just like you know drag and drop elements um so i don't have anything to compare it with uh, if there are better options that are like cost effective and we are on some plan where we are like very cost effective so that's very important for us like we've always been uh, conservative in terms of uh, money we've always been a small team like you know you listen to danya and vignesh they're like uh, why are you guys like spending so much time like you know you should just like launch you don't know how we launched tnm we were just like three people and we just like launched it like that and it's great right i mean these people have like uh, i mean danya and vignesh i really have like a lot of respect for the fact that they started from like pretty much like just a team of like two or three people and then uh, this is where we are now and that's because you know there is a lot of courage uh, uh, yes. with uh, the founders and there's a lot of like sort of strength in saying that It's okay. We'll make mistakes, but we'll yes. learn from them, right? Yes. Fail fast yes. and move on. So uh, that's always like sort of, um, you know, uh, the uh, the belief that we have uh, in uh, being able to do something right, right? 
I mean, yes. we may get it wrong for the first time, the second time, but the third time we'll get it right. We won't yes. make the same mistake twice. Yes. yes. So that's our... Uh, so Bhanutij, if that's the right name I pronounce, has a question that, is there an right. ideal size in terms of the word count, uh, Ragamalika, which you guys subscribe to, or that this is what we should be, we should not exceed 800, 1200, 1500 words? Right. So it's, it's a very controversial question, right? Um, in terms of, uh, initially, like, we've had like a lot of fights on, hey, why is it so long and why is it so short and this and that and la 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 la. And uh, the honest answer is like nobody has the correct answer, right? Sometimes uh, it might be like a, a little longer than usual, but it still like works because, you know, the subject is such that people want to read as much. Um, and uh, of course, like I have uh, one of my colleagues and friends, Ram, he's like, you know, no, 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 the main piece, it has to be like a hard 600 or a hard 800. And I'm like, you know, sometimes it can't be a hard anything, right? Sometimes it has to be a thousand words uh, if uh, it has to make sense. And sometimes when you're, uh, I mean, uh, if my colleague Samia is like writing about SPB and, you know, I tell her, no, 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 hard 800, hard 800. And the feelings don't stop at hard 800 sometimes, right? So, um, yeah, I, uh, I mean, we have rules, so to say, about like, you know, hard number of uh, words and stuff like that. I break them all the time. Um, so it's, uh, it, it, uh, should feel substantial for me. If somebody is like paying for a newsletter, it should feel substantial in terms of what they're paying for, right? If they're paying for okay. insight, then it should like be substantial enough that they're not like feeling like, oh, you haven't given me my money's worth, right? So that is what I would uh, sort of say. Abhishek, may I? This is Bhanu. Yeah, please Bhanu, please yeah. ask the question. Yeah, so, uh, what I gather is, uh, a lot of it is about uh, gut feel. I mean, like ultimately it's like, what kind of, what do we go with page one? I mean, I, I've been a print journalist all my life. So I'll talk in terms of newspapers. I've just moved into online journalism. It's like, so what goes into page one or what goes where, you know, that kind of a call, right? It's a, it's a gut uh, kind of uh, uh, feel that you have to have about what the subject would be and uh, how much you're going to talk about it. It's, it's about how passionately you're going to talk about it and who you're addressing and what do you plan to, what you plan to achieve by that, by the, by, by the newsletter itself. Right. So, right. Um, I mean, when you, uh, when you talk to like a lot of people uh, uh, internationally on like subscriptions and just the international discourse around like publishing and uh, revenue and all of that, like, Everybody says, no, just don't listen to your editorial team. Like, listen to what the data is saying. And uh, which a lot of like, tech people also sort of believe in, I guess. But um, it's just good, like, advice in terms of saying that, you know, you have to look at data. A lot of journalists don't look at data. Um, but I would also say that at the end of the day, if we are uh, going down the route of, I will only give you what you want, then we get 24-7 Kangana Ranawat, right? Like, journalists cannot like sort of uh, i mean anybody like i'm sure like you've been in like print and you know it's it's not in us to sort of say that you know uh, we are going against our editorial values and stuff like that obviously i'm not that doesn't mean that you know the data should not be looked at you should look at data but uh, and you should like sort of get enough like qualitative feedback on like you know is uh, somebody are most people feeling like you know, your newsletter is too short or too long or, you know, some element of the newsletter is just off, right? Like they don't want it. Why are you putting so much effort into it then, right? So those are like conversations we need to like basically keep your editorial values, but at the same time, don't be uh, the person who says, you give me money, I give you a newspaper, then our relationship ends. Then I don't care what happens with that newspaper. Yeah, I right? think he was also wanting to ask, like for me, newsletters, because I know that a lot of people will not just spend, spend half an hour in the email, like reading, it's a, within the email experience, it's like the pyramid, inverted pyramid. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, you give the top or the, you give the nut graph, you know, that you kind of give them the complete sense of the thing. And then they want to move on to six interesting things at the same time. It's like you're picking a book of flowers, the best news, and then some nut graph and not just wanting them to go on to the next website. That's been my experience. My newsletters are around 1,000 words every time. I want to keep them to 800 words because I wanted to keep it shorter. Like William Zenser says that there is no punishment for a shorter sentence, word, paragraph in the court of the Lord. So that that's I subscribe to. So Bhanu, I mean, the fundamentals, I, I mean, I'm not a journalist, but I am only learning from you guys. Like, uh, the shorter, the better in terms of anything. I mean, I, 
unless there is a specific needs to go go long form but newsletter is not the long form medium right. at all yeah fair enough and right. it's not 2000 words not so enough. we have we we also have another question very quick question uh, subscription versus membership what is the difference is very basic i mean you did say we are not we are not into subscription we are membership a brand please elaborate a bit on that and then we'll just so, wrap up right subscription is um uh i subscribe to times of india they give me a newspaper i subscribe to uh, hindu they give me a newspaper right i subscribe to uh, um, i don't know like any particular product and i get that right and yeah. the relationship sort of ends there uh membership like when you say forget news or forget publishing when you say i'm a member of something what are you a member of right people are members of bangalore club or boring club people are members of uh, rotary club right or people are members of uh, i'm a member of nwmi the network of women in media in india right so when you say you're a member of something the relationship is deeper right the relationship is not one of i give you money you give me content right it is it has to be a little bit more than that it has to be a sense of i am a part of something bigger than myself right whether that is i am a part of the elite of bangalore and therefore i'm in bangalore club or i'm a part of uh, the elite which is doing social good therefore i'm part of rotary club or i am a part of uh, a group of people who care about what happens to women in media and therefore i am a part of i am a member of nwmi so like that so obviously it it seems like it's uh, sort of something like completely unrelated to news in that sense but news is such a everyday part of our lives like you know we are invested in what is happening around the world and news publications are the ones that are getting this out to you so i don't know if membership can be done by like large organizations like hindu or times of india or network 18 because they are too big right they don't have uh, that kind of a connect with their uh, readers right they've always been used to the work culture has always also always been that you know i am giving this to you right that has been the relationship i am the expert you are the user so that has been the relationship for big media all the time but across the world there are lots of organizations now that are like you know sort of doing membership and that goes with uh, the understanding that you know these are people who are part of your journey these are people who want to support you so for instance quickly uh, d correspondent in uh, dutch uh, that is a purely uh, membership model uh, publication and they do unbreaking news right they have like some correspondents work on like you know certain issues and they deep dive into it um dive deep into it and they've started in english last year so uh, from india i think uh, tanmay goswami is uh, part of uh, the yes. correspondent is a mental health correspondent for them uh, and similarly um there is an organization in bristol uh, which uh, they ran as a cooperative it was a media organization that ran as a cooperative so all the members were part of the cooperative right they paid and they could vote they had voting rights in the organization on the stories that they did right now all of these of, of course the uh, the model of publication also matters right like what if you're doing breaking news uh and you're expecting like members to vote on things is it going to work probably not right but at the same time membership is that feeling that you know i am a part of something right uh for instance if something happens to me i pay hindu how much ever every month right but if something happens to me tomorrow hindu doesn't care hindu doesn't know my name hindu doesn't know who raga is right but uh if i'm a member of tnm tnm cares tnm cares about the fact that you are a member and you are a part of this right it's not like is you know we are going to say oh no we don't even know who you are you are some unnamed person no i'm going to take that effort to you know make sure i can get to know you to whatever extent you want me to know you right i want to be able to say that you know these are things that are happening in the world that you may be able to contribute to and uh, you may feel good about doing that or you can tell me you know what is the story that i am missing like for instance one of our members came up and said that you know uh, guys this prashant bhushan issue is happening why haven't you guys written enough about it like you know i don't think you've done enough about it and that was a wake up call for us right and yeah. that is a symbiotic relationship it's not like we are saying hey we know everything we will give you you take it and eat it no it's basically you tell me you tell me if okay. my recipe is good or bad and you know i am going to listen to you because you are important to me and the my ideas are going to come from you any journalist who says that you know i don't care for what people say is lying right our ideas come from people so that is uh, the difference i would say i don't know if i have explained it well but uh, yeah that is the difference between yeah. membership and subscription 